Welcome to Common Man Cocktails. This is a little behind the scenes, hopefully a Monday exercise. We will release this on Monday, hopefully. I'll be out of town Monday and Tuesday, but I'll do what I can to get it up on site. This is a review of Caliche Puerto Rican Rum. I could be saying that completely wrong, but it says Cal Iche. I think it kind of makes sense. So that's what, that's what we're gonna do. Pour a little bit in here, top of my little water, and first inspection is it's clear. Yeah, clear, right there. So as clear as water. This, you could be bathing in this or something. You know what, I kind of like the bottle. I'm a, it's, uh, it looks like one of those hand blown, has like the little bubbles in it. Uh, very, uh, very Patronish. Although I think Patron puts more money in their bottle than the product, I don't really know. So let's see. This is, by the way, created by the same folks that do Don Q, because it's the same distillery, uh, Distilleria Soralis, 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 let's say. Um, I don't know much about it, so let's go. I don't even care. I just want to get into it. Caramel. I get caramel. Oh, smells like a sweet caramel, uh, brown sugar, and alcohol. There's definitely, what is the ABV? It's probably 40, right? 40%. You get a nice hint, like a, a cane sugar. I guess that's what we should get, right? I don't know if this is pure cane, uh, molasses. I don't know what Puerto Rican has to be, if it has any specific denotations of how it must be, but this has definitely a nice sweet, sweet aroma. Almost, quite honestly, which I hate that word because it makes it sound like everything else I'm saying is lying. Quite honestly, smells like a dark rum. Like if you put this side by side with a dark rum, close your eyes and smell it, because the colors you could see, uh, I would I would have a hard time thinking this wasn't dark. <clears throat> now I find out I have a small cut in the back of my throat and it's currently on fire screaming in my face. But that's okay, really, really. So the first thing I get is pain, but most people aren't gonna get that. There is a very mouth coating heat to this. Room temperature, a little bit of water, but very smooth, silky. US, uh, US dollars, 25 bucks for this. It's smooth, silky, sweet, like in a, in a dark, sugary, sweet, I I'm, I don't get as much of that caramel flavor, that brown sugar, maybe a little brown sugar, but not that that aroma that comes out. You get a little bit only because it's it's still in your nasal passages as you're taking that sip. But this is oh on ice, this is gonna rock your face off. Like there's definitely definitely some nice sweet sweet tones to this, and even a little bit of fruitiness, like a. Uh, like maybe Eva, a little like a pineapple-y, um, pineapple flesh skin, the outside, like if it was gets just ripe enough so where it gets soft, it's got a little bit of that playing around, but mild muted fruits, nice, cane, I, I'm, I don't know if it's cane sugar, it doesn't taste, it, it tastes more like maybe molasses, I don't know, but it has definitely has a sweet cur, uh, profile to it, easy to drink, nice full bodied, I don't, I, this is a, I mean, if you think about this, this is a, I think, a pretty pricey bottle, uh, a light rum for $25 MSRP. You probably can get it for 16 online or something like that. People will be able to play with the pricing, I think. But overall, I, I think it has to have some of those, those, I wouldn't say multi-dimensional, but it definitely has more of a sweet curve to it. Not too, too unlike a 10 cane, where 10 cane costs you a little bit more. You get a little bit more for the, the full body flavor of the drink. I would say if you're making like a, a something that's very rum centric, this would work well. I wouldn't put this in like a Long Island iced tea or anything that has like more than say three components. If it has tequila, I would leave it out because this, I think you're gonna lose a lot of the flavor because I get a similarity in tequila with some of that sweetness on a, on a higher end tequila. You really wanna think about cocktails that focus center on the rum and maybe some bitters, like or orange flower water, or something like that to accent it, 
and if you're into vermouth, maybe vermouth, me, not so much. I could totally see like a pomegranate splash, uh, maybe even, you know, a liqueur in that direction, although pomegranate might get a little medicinal. Uh, I wouldn't go too, too heavy sweet, like I wouldn't go with a Baron Jaeger, uh, maybe some, even a some weird cognac type play. I don't know. So think about that and and just consider the fact that at the price point you may be purchasing it at, I would say this is a definite core component to a drink and it has some nice driven sweetness to it. So there you go. That's the Calico Puerto Rican rum. Again, there are some recipes that call for Puerto Rican rum. Is it the Trader Vic that was looking for Puerto Rican rum, Jennifer? What? Which was Trader Vic? Was that looking for Puerto Rican or... Was it? It wasn't Barbados. Yeah, the trade of Mai Tai, I think, was Puerto Rican. It might have been. What's was Appleton's it? estate? No, Jamaican. It was, yeah, Jamaican. Jamaican. So if you find a recipe that calls for Puerto Rican rum, there you go. Personally, for me, rum to me is, I go for flavor, not necessarily region. So if I think something's going to be flavorful in a cocktail, I'll use that, regardless of whether they tell me, no, use it from Barbados, use it from the Caribbean, screw you, uh, whatever. There you go. Done. Calico Puerto Rican rum. EverydayDrinkers.com. You can also get these uh, little whiskey sniffers on AwesomeDrinks.com. There, there's three domains. How many more do you need today? We're done. We're teaching you how to drink.